Hello, I'm Jonathan Sharples. I'm a professor in oceanography at the University of Liverpool. What I'm going to show you today is an example of a laboratory class that some of the students uh, will do in the, in the first year of their studies. It's also a way of explaining something fundamental about how the ocean works, uh, how the ocean sorts itself out based on how dense uh, the different waters are. Practically, think, of, think about this problem. What happens when a river reaches the ocean? So you've got fresh water in the river interacting with the salt water uh, in the uh, ocean. So we're going to set up a little experiment that shows us what will happen uh, when that happens. So which is fresh water in the tank. This side is going to be my ocean, so I'm going to put some salt in it. A bit of food colour just so that we can see what's going on. And the other side is the fresh water in the river. So for us in Liverpool, our local example uh, obviously is the River Mersey entering the um, Irish Sea. So you've got the fresh water in the River Mersey entering into the Irish Sea, which is very, um, very salty. So two different densities of water. Salty water, which is denser, coming up against fresh water, which is much less dense. So what we expect to happen is that the dense water will sink and the fresh low density water from the river will float on top and that's what you're going to see demonstrated in this uh, in this practical okay so nice blue sea water on this side the salty water on this side and the fresh river water um, on the uh, on the other side so river mersey irish sea Okay, I'll pull the gate out. So what you can see there is that dense salty water forming that current along the bottom. But the shape of that current is a bit like an avalanche. Um, the, the physics of the problem is exactly the, exactly the same. So you see that dense salty water creeping along uh, the bottom in one direction. And you had almost a mirror image of the fresh water flowing in the surface in the opposite direction. So that process is going on all the time in estuaries, anywhere where fresh water enters into the ent enters into the ocean. And there's a couple of practical reasons why that might be important to, to know about. For instance, if you're trying to uh, manage the use of an estuary for an industry, so say an industry wants to introduce a pollutant into the estuary with the idea that it will go out into the ocean and get dispersed, now you know that it's important to recognise how dense is that pollutant? If that pollutant is buoyant and floats to the surface, then it's great. It goes out of the estuary in that fresh water flow at the surface. If, however, the pollutant is dense, it sinks towards the bottom of the estuary and actually gets brought into the estuary by that dense incoming salty water. So in that case, you end up concentrating the pollutant uh, in the estuary. Another example, uh, more on the marine biology side, is that there are lots of animals that live in estuaries that want to stay there. So an example would be uh, fiddler crabs or blue crabs. They want to live in the estuary because the type of mud on the bottom of the estuary is exactly where they want to uh, hunt for food and make, make burrows. The problem is when they reproduce they release lots of eggs and larvae into the water and they go up towards the surface into their outgoing fresh water and go out of the estuary. But what's really neat is that as the eggs hatch and the larvae grow older they get bigger and denser and they start to sink and they sink down into that dense salty incoming water. So you end up with a population that is maintained in the estuary because its whole life history utilises this outgoing circulation at the surface and the incoming circulation uh, underneath. 